Warning, All Things Crime is a true crime production that may contain violent or disturbing material. Viewer or listener discretion is advised. Well, again, this is where you, you get to people that have never been cops or have no sort of law enforcement experience now offering their quote unquote expert opinion on what the cops should or shouldn't have done. Um, what these people don't understand is as cops, we have a we have a fraction of a second to make a decision. Was this kid firing a gun? Yes. Um, he had just finished firing eight shots at a moving vehicle. You know, this is why the cop was there. The cop didn't just decide to pick a random person and run after them. The cop was, was, was responding to a call. Um, and then this kid knew why the cop was coming after him. He threw the gun behind the fence. And then, you know, the cop made a decision. I'm not gonna condemn or Monday morning quarterback a cop based on a video I've seen where I can slow it down and analyze it and take a look and then rewind it and look at it again to see what should or shouldn't have happened. In real time, in that situation, the cop had to make a quick decision. I mean, it's, it's an easy, like I said, it's an easy fix for them. Their main goal is to get reelected. So they're not going to do anything to mess with that. They're not going to give hard answers towards the community that might work in the long run, or, or but for, for the short term, they don't get reelected or they, they jeopardize their chances of being reelected or, you know, for them to get reelected, they have to give the easy, soft answer, which is to demonize cops to uh, weaken the military, to go after the people that, that to sort of pick and choose where they want to go. Yeah, I mean, just like I said, you know, they, they create these laws, like you said, they create these laws. The people don't understand what you, you know, if you want the laws changed, you have to affect the lawmakers. The people making the most noise right now are the ones affecting change. You know, you're talking about Black Lives Matter, you're talking about Antifa, they're making the most noise. So according to these politicians, they think this is what the people want. This is why I tell people you have to be more vocal and more open about your support for cops. Once these elected politicians see that there's a, a swell of support for cops, they're going to change their tune. Um, you know, even, even the most liberal of them are going to change their tune. I mean, just look at what happened in January 6th. Uh, you know, it was easy for them to support cops and condemn Trump at the same time. Like you said, not to make this political, but that's just what happened. Uh, they were, they were, Supporting cops, you know, oh, we love our police, you know, let's let's support them, let's back them up against these evil Trump supporters that attacked them at the Capitol. And then two days ago, you've got Maxine Waters calling for uh, an uprising against uh, law enforcement and everything else like that. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know, they go by whichever direction the wind pushes them. The wind has to be pushed in the direction where they're supporting law enforcement. That's how change comes about. Yeah, I was in Minneapolis uh, three weeks ago, I think. I was up there training uh, Hennepin County on, on a new MVAC, and it was crazy. Downtown, a lot of the businesses were all boarded up. Every public building had plywood everywhere, double fencing, you know, multiple layers of fencing. It's like they knew what's coming. And the sad thing is, it's not really going to matter what the outcome of the trial is. They, they expect everything to burn and and then yeah you have politicians that are going up there and it's insane to me they should be up there saying hey we need to allow the justice system to play out this is our justice system we have to support it we need to these citizens these fellow citizens that are sitting on this jury imagine the pressure these guys are under oh yeah you know these these 15 individuals who are just everyday people like you and I that are sitting there on this jury there they've been selected to be people that are going to literally mean imprisonment or freedom for this you know Chauvin but they know what's going on and now they're going to hear all this chanting and screaming and yelling and and protesting outside 
They're going to see buildings burn. It, I don't care how much you try to uh, sequester these people. There's no way they're not going to know what's going on out there. And especially the day that they have to get moved somewhere, you know, pack your bag because uh, this hotel's about to get burned down. You know, something like that happens. They know what's going on. And so the influence of them beginning, you know, in the back of their minds, they've got to be going like, well, if we vote the wrong way, what's going to happen to my family? Somebody is going to, is going to put it out there of who I am. You know, is my house going to get burned down? And, and it's like you guys, like I, I have good friends that live in my neighborhood who are cops and most of them on social media have a different name. You know, they, when they were helping enforce the, there was a riot in Salt Lake City the night after the, the initial George Floyd incident and the Salt Lake PD, they, they shut that thing down the second night, but there were a lot of cops that got doxxed from that. Right. How much, how much more un-American can you get? Well, I mean, you know, this is, this is, these cops have families. They have, you know, wives, children that didn't ask for any of this. You know, these cops are doing their jobs and, and basically their families are being attacked now. It's, it's, it's not just un-American, it's terrorism. I mean, you're, you're, you're threatening someone's family. These people should all be jailed. You know, God forbid, they find your house now and they break in. You know, you've got a family at home that, that didn't ask for any of this. You know, they, they, they've got enough pressure. You know, my wife, my daughter have enough pressure with me going out there every day. And I can't 100% guarantee them I'm going to get back. And now the added pressure of a bunch of terrorists, uh, anarchist groups outside that now want to, you know, want to threaten us. I mean, at what point, again, with these elected officials, at what point do you protect cops and go, you know what, if you go to their house, we're arresting everyone on scene. You know, you wouldn't go to someone's private house and threaten them. You know, you wouldn't go to the, any of these uh, elected officials' houses and, and threaten them. You know, uh, uh, I think uh, Lori Lightfoot had a police detail in front of her house. You know, other mayors had police details in front of their houses protecting them. You wouldn't go to a cop's house and, and, and protest him. I mean, excuse me, you can't go to a, pro, a cop's house and protest him and nothing happens. You can't go to an elected official's house and protest them without repercussions. So how about we protect cops and we protect their property and we protect them doing their job, the job that they signed up for, the job that you're asking them to do. Yeah, like I, said, I think they should all be arrested. You know, you go to a cop's house, you start protesting, you start threatening his family. How is this allowed? How is this okay? I, I don't understand it at all. Yeah, I 100% agree. Your family deserves the exact same protections and the exact same rights of privacy and everything else that anybody else's family does. And when kids and families, you know, there used to be kind of an unspoken ethic that like even a politician's family was off limits. And I, I think I'm not sure exactly where it started, but to this day, anytime anybody starts, you know, bashing a politician's family, well, it depends on what side they're on, of course, but the media goes crazy. Yeah. And frankly, they should do that exact same thing. If anybody is protesting a cop's family or something like that, it's like you're you outside of you being a police officer, you are a private citizen and you 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 and your family deserve the same privacy that my family does or that anybody else's family does. And it's uh, when, when that doesn't happen, when people start like when my friend's address and family uh, and all that information got put out there and basically they got doxxed, I was I was pissed. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, hey, brother, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll break open my safe and I'll go stand guard at your house. You know, you just tell me, you give me the word and I, I will stand there. And trust me, nobody will touch your family. Well, you know, that, that's also the thing, too. Uh, most cops I know <clears throat> are very Second Amendment friendly. So uh, you break into their house. <laughs> I don't think it's going to wind up too well for you. It's going to be a bad day. Oh, yeah. You better have all your affairs taken care of before you uh, break into a cop's house. Yeah, the, be the best, uh, uh, what is that doormat that I've ever seen? It says, before you break into this house, make sure you're, you're good with God because you're about to meet him. <laughs> I just bought that. <laughs> oh, did you really? Oh, that's I awesome. Yeah, I love that. I, ne I need to get one. So, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those where I'm like, look, I don't care what you do. 
as as a job, you have the responsibility to your employer to do the best job that you can possibly do. And all of you guys in law enforcement have signed up to do this job. And the job includes enforcing the laws that the politicians establish. And, the, you know, there's a, it's not like you guys are making it up as you go along. You have certain obligations as police officers to do what you were, you were hired to do and what you're trained to do. And that includes enforcing the law. And when people break the law, like this uh, 13-year-old in Chicago, it's like if you objectively look at that scenario, there is no way that you can actually say that that cop did anything other than what he was supposed to do. Well, again, this is where you, you get to people that have never been cops or have no sort of law enforcement experience now offering their quote unquote expert opinion on what the cops should or shouldn't have done. Um, what these people don't understand is as cops, we have, a, we have a fraction of a second to make a decision. Was this kid firing a gun? Yes. Was he a, was he a gang member? Oh yeah, you know, my, my experience in gang, I can look at his pictures and I saw all the gang symbols there, all the gang uh, uh, terminology and codes. Um, his na nickname was Little Homicide, which isn't, you, that's not a name you just pick for yourself. That's a name that's given to you by other gang members. Um, he had just finished firing eight shots at a moving vehicle. You know, this is why the cop was there. The cop didn't just decide to pick a random person and run after them. The cop was, was responding to a call. Um, and then this kid knew why the cop was coming after him. He threw the gun behind the fence. And then, you know, the cop made a decision. I'm not going to condemn or Monday morning quarterback a cop based on a video I've seen where I can slow it down and analyze it and take a look and then rewind it and look at it again to see what should or shouldn't have happened. In real time, in that situation, the cop had to make a quick decision. People don't understand, you know, we have families as well. We wanna go home at the end of our tour. We don't wanna be the cop where, you know, we're on a t-shirt now, or, you know, we have cops flying in for our funeral. I don't want that to ever happen. My wife doesn't want it to ever happen. I don't, ever, I don't wanna, you know, I've been to too many cop funerals. I don't wanna see it happen to any other cop. But this kid made a decision as well. And he made some grown man decisions that day. You know, it's a grown man decision to carry a gun. It's a grown man decision to fire it. So he, he paid a grown man consequence. You know, everybody's saying, oh, he was 13. He was 13. Guess what? In that space, he was just as grown as a 21-year-old or, or a 23-year-old. He made decisions that day. You know, and then you got Lori Lightfoot crying on TV. She's not crying for the seven-year-old that was uh, just shot. She's crying for this guy. Like I said, again, it's the most expedient, quick answer, the quick uh, uh, points that she can score. Not the real points that she wants to score where she can ask, why was he out at, at three o'clock in the morning? Why was he carrying the gun? Why was his name Little Homicide? Um, but again, you know, that's, that's pandering for votes, not doing the right thing that's gonna actually build your community up in the future. Which is sad and Yes, it is tragic that a 13-year-old lost his life. But like you said, every choice has a consequence, or at least it should. And that's, that's, again, it goes way back to what we first started with, is that individual responsibility. You know, at what junction do we take the blame off of the cop who was just, like you said, reacting? And I love all these people that are, that Monday morning quarterbacks are the best, because I, I listen to some of these people on, on TV and, you know, Twitter warriors and all of these types. And I'm like, yeah, you know what, let's put you in one of those uh, training scenarios and see how you do, because every single one of those that I've ever seen where they'll take, and it doesn't matter if it's a pastor or a politician or a Hollywood actor, it doesn't matter. You put them in an actual scenario, one of those training scenarios that you guys go through all the time whether it be virtual or, you know, a mock scenario, any of them, they fail miserably. Oh yeah. And the cops out there, when you guys are out there and you're in the heat of this situation, you don't have the luxury of freeze frame. You don't have the luxury of saying, does this kid have a gun? Literally one second ago, I saw a gun in that kid's hand. And now his hands are moving and they're moving in a direction that, yeah, maybe he's just moving to put his hands in the air, 
But that's the exact same movement that is required to actually point a weapon at me and fire. it. And that, you know, that officer, unfortunately, had to make a decision. And in that split second, you know, for for us to come back and Monday morning quarterback this guy because we have the luxury of freeze frame. I, to me, that is just that is just so unacceptable. Well, yeah, I mean, these, these people that do the simulations, not only do they fail it, they all come away saying, you know what, I have a newfound respect for what law enforcement goes through. That's why some of these uh, activists, these, you know, want to be activists, they will not do the simulation. Listen, they, they understand what's going to happen. They understand the truth of what's going to happen, but it's going to, it's going to screw up their entire narrative. You know, right. Isn't gonna, that funny? You know, they're not going to be able to, to say what they have to say with the same conviction. Yeah. You know, you've got these people on Twitter, you know, some, some kid living in his mom's basement, you know, he's 35 year old and has never ventured outside of his basement, but he's played hours of call of duty. So he thinks he's got just as much say as an actual cop out in the street on what should and shouldn't have happened. Why didn't he just shoot the gun out of his hand? Why didn't he just shoot him in the leg? You know, why did I saw someone say, why didn't he just tackle him? Excuse me. I'm not going to tackle someone that's got a gun. You know, I don't feel like being shot at close range. Just because you can have a, you in your basement can have a feel good moment of, oh, well, you know, look at it, look at the cop de escalated. That happened. No, that's not de escalating. That's being dumb and dying. You know, my, my, that's why my response is always, you know, if you don't have any actual police work doing this, if you've never strapped on a gun belt, if you've never strapped on a vest, if you don't know this is stand a foot post and, you know, people walk past you and they feel good because you're standing there and they know they feel safe, they're safe at least for that, uh, those couple of yards while you're there, then I really don't want to hear your opinion on what should and shouldn't have happened. You know, it's like me going to my doctor before surgery and saying, yeah, hey, make sure, you know, when you do, before you take it, grab that scalpel, make sure you do this and make this kind of incision. You know, I watched a bunch of medical shows on TV and this is exactly how they did it. No, I, I would sound dumb. Most people will agree. I, you sound dumb telling a doctor how to do his job. Same thing with law enforcement. Just because you've played a video game or just because you've watched a TV show that's real life, it doesn't mean you know exactly what's going on or how cops think or how cops operate or what's going on in that heat of the moment. That, that's why I really don't pay him any mind. Well, that's good. because, And I'm glad you don't. And I hope most cops don't because honestly, the vast majority out here, and it, and it makes me, it makes me a little perturbed that it's the silent majority because it needs to be the vocal of majority. Absolutely. And until we become the, the vocal majority, these politicians are going to continue to make things worse and activists and everybody else. But if you, I, I'll bet if you look at it, it's less than 1% of the society that is actually making 99% of the noise. And until all of us that are just out here trying to live our daily lives actually get involved and say, whoa, this isn't right. We've got to fix this, which is again, another reason why I'm doing this podcast, because I'm trying to give you guys a voice. And I know you're doing it with the, the same thing with your podcast. And the more podcasts that are out there that are saying the same thing, maybe we all say it in different ways. And that's fine. To me, there can't be enough voices out there saying, we have got to stop this madness. You know, protesting is fine. But the moment you pick up a brick, the moment you threaten somebody, it is no longer a protest. 